Today we are looking at a box Stradivarius that has our VGR system and a Harrelson mod kit on this. And I'm going to describe and uh, demonstrate how these things work. But first let me show you the horn very quickly. This was a horn that was traded in towards a Summit trumpet. And it is a Bach 37. You can see it's a little older. It's in really good shape. And uh, I'm sorry to say it's already sold. But the reason I'm showing you this is to really introduce you once again to the VGR, show you how we can put that on any horn. See that brace is reversed up there. And same with the mod kit. And then show the advantages of adding this to your horn. So it was a standard box Stradivarius. And a couple years ago, one of our clients uh, purchased the VGR and he had the original receiver pulled off this brace removed, and then our receiver put on there, and then we have this uh, receiver section that screws on. So this is what's called the mount. This is the receiver, and they come in two different sizes. And you can change the venturi, the gap, the flexibility, the slotting, the airflow, and adjust the um, resonance, all by putting a different insert on here. So if you see way back here, I have this entire display of inserts and this is how you can adjust it so you can see from left to right we have different venturi sizes the smallest one's 332 the largest one is way over here is uh 360 so you can adjust those and then the numbers 2 through 18 those would allow you to adjust the flexibility and the slotting so what i'm going to do right now is grab just one of these I'm gonna do uh, the very smallest one, 332, and it is a number two in the gap setting. That means it's 20 thousandths of gap. I'm gonna screw the receiver on, and then I'm just gonna play the horn. So what I've done is taken a regular Bach lead pipe, and I've made the venturi, or the airflow, as tight as possible. <laughs> and feels a lot like a Bach. The difference is I've got added efficiency because of the mod kit and my mouthpiece and the receiver. But also I've really fine-tuned that Venturi or the airflow to as small as possible. So now even though it sounds like a Bach, I'm putting less air in. It's extremely easy to play higher because the airflow is already reduced for me in the lead pipe. So that Venturi insert, which we call a VGR insert, uh, makes the upper register easier. It's very easy to play in the upper register with a 332 insert. So double high C's are extremely easy, dialing it down to a small setup. I'm gonna remove the receiver, take that insert out, I just pop it off with my thumb like that, and now I'm gonna put the biggest one on. And the biggest is a 360, number 16. So that one is huge. And it's actually bigger than the Venturi of this lead pipe. So we're not gonna get the full advantage of that. But if you were putting this on a Harrelson trumpet or a Monet, uh, then you would get the full advantage of the larger sizes. So now I can put more air through the horn. The tone quality is bigger, it's more robust, it has a lot more balance. And I'll tell you what, this is a really big warm sound. But at the same time, um, a lot of the purpose of this is not only to change the tonal quality, but to find the setup that fits you perfect. Now, I'm a little bit of a rare case because I invented all this stuff. I'm pretty good at playing on all the variations.
but you at home watching this video may find that there's a specific Venturi size that works really well for you. You may also find that the gap setting, remember that two through 18, that number could really help you fine tune uh, the balance between flexibility and slotting so you can really play the entire range of the horn easily. And it's different for every player. So when you watch my videos, don't think that um, this stuff doesn't work or that there's not much change. It's only because it's me that, because I, I play this stuff every day, I'm, I'm the rare case. I mean, probably there's no one else in the world that plays as many variations as I do, simply because that's what I do for a living. Um, I can still play a double high C on this giant thing as well. Um, so it doesn't really help you understand it. But if you were standing here with me, and let's say a high G is kind of your limit, I'm sure you could easily get to a double high C if you had the right setup. And we'd fine tune it until we got there and you'd have that aha moment and you'd go home very happy. I know that because I deal with a lot of customers who walk in here really doubting that this can work and then we set up their mouthpiece and a VGR setting, whether on one of our horns or on your own horn. And then uh, you go home happy because you're like, wow, I thought I topped out at a G, but I can play double high C pretty consistently. Um, and that happens to a lot of players. So what, I'm, what we're hearing right now with this big difference is um, I have a lot more harder slots because it is a bigger setting. I actually missed one on the way down, partially because I wasn't paying real close attention to it, but it should be easier than that. They're locking in really hard. I can't slide between them as easily because on this, uh, on this list of options here, two through 16 or 18, I'm at a 16. And that means that I'm going to have harder slotting. I'm not going to have the flexibility. To get there, I'd have to move to something that's uh, smaller, so less gap or less impedance. So I can still play the same range. Is it as easy in the upper register? Honestly? I play on huge equipment and it still is not as easy. It's much easier on smaller uh, venture inserts. So that's the VGR. And to review, I'll pull it up close to the camera. All I'm doing is taking this piece off and then I'm changing the insert. So let's take it off once so you can see that up close. Okay. And then that insert right there pops off. See, there it is. And I can put it back on. I could screw it back on. So that's the VGR. The other thing I wanted to point out today is the mod kit, which includes the bottom caps, top caps, and finger buttons. Now it's interesting, I've had a few younger people and younger players. Um, it's oftentimes the younger people that think they know everything. And uh, I get that. I mean, when I was younger and I thought I knew a lot of stuff too. What I've learned as I've gotten older is that um, I have a lot to learn and I think we all do and I try to be as open-minded as possible in everything in life because I don't really have all the answers. I'm discovering and as I discover and develop new products and, and new ideas um, and new approaches then I share them with you. But the, the SWE mod kit is something I invented in the very beginning of my company, so <clears throat> in the mid 90s. And um, that setup uh, of adding higher efficiency top and bottom caps and finger buttons. The reason I do that and how I discovered that was in the physics lab, studying with an acoustician from Yamaha, who was my professor. So I was doing independent studies on brass acoustics in uh, a school, uh, really a music school, that was uh, also a science school. So uh, St. Olaf College, you can look it up if, uh, if you don't know that school. But uh, a really reputable school for science and I was studying science and trumpet performance. So those were my big things. I wanted to understand how to make trumpets play better. I discovered that um, adding inertia to different parts of the horn could prevent the tubing wall from vibrating. And we dubbed that as standing wave efficiency because essentially that's what's happening. The standing wave inside the instrument is in fact exerting high pressure at the antinodes and causing it to vibrate, which we want to happen in certain areas like the bell. But we don't want to transfer that energy everywhere. So what I was 
saying earlier was I had a, a few different young people recently criticize me and become really kind of nasty on social media. They said I should never use the word standing wave efficiency or SWE. Um, I should never talk about inertia or efficiency or any of those things because they said that's all smoke and mirrors and that's advertising from the 1800s. Uh, I think what they were getting at is like snake oil type stuff, like stuff that doesn't work. This is the opposite. This actually does work. It's proven in a lab to work. It's real science. It's a real thing. The reason we use the word standing wave efficiency is because that's what's happening. So uh, the more people hear things like this, uh, hopefully the more your mind will open up to the fact that people out there have done their research and where we basically have been an R&D company for our entire history, um, researching physics and acoustics as it pertains to brass instruments. So I want to clarify that and put that out there because some of the stuff that was said on social media, and that stuff happens all the time, was kind of ridiculous to say that we just made up these uh, names to sell products. I mean, that's actually the exact opposite of how and why we did this. Um, there are a lot of companies that I will not name that do either copy some of the stuff we do without understanding how or why it works or even doing it correctly. Um, uh, or they just make stuff up. And I get it. I mean, a lot of us are fed up with stuff that doesn't work. The thing is, it does work. We guarantee it. And I'm happy to, to work with you personally and show you how and why it does work. Um, but the SWE mod kit does add inertia in areas that normally would vibrate too much. I would love to add inertia all over the horn wherever it needs to be, but doing that on a Bach is quite challenging. So that's why we offer the mod kit is because it's an inexpensive, easy way to upgrade your horn and make it play easier. It doesn't darken the tone, uh, but instead it makes every note more solid and easy to play. It's not going to prevent an anti-node from vibrating in a certain part of the horn that's nowhere near that. So there's still problems with a Bach or a Yamaha. But with that said, this does improve it a fair amount. We also have been developing high efficiency stems, which are not on this horn, but they will be coming out here in a couple months. And we've spent a lot of time developing those to again, add efficiency, especially the horns that are over a couple years old, because as your horn wears on the pistons, then they have more and more tolerance, meaning they can vibrate more when there's an anti-node inside the piston. And when that happens, um, it can set it into vibration easier. So by adding inertia there, the stems, uh, we can prevent that and make the horn play easier. And that's another innovation we're working on. Um, but uh, I just want you to know, the reason we only offer them here and not everywhere else is because we build trumpets. <laughs> so. The reason we don't do all that work, and maybe we will someday, but the reason we don't is because all these horns behind me are the solution. So if you're looking to go beyond a VGR and a mod kit, then I encourage you to sell your horn or have it as your backup or trade it in and get into an X-Series horn that's more efficient or a Summit or a Muse because we do have those uh, solutions. We just don't have them for Bach because uh, our goal is not to over improve a Bach trumpet. You could add a ton of stuff to it. It could be a lot of work and a lot of money. Instead, we recommend buying a horn that was designed to be more efficient. So, the purpose of this video is to show you the VGR and the mod kit, explain how and why we make them, and to tell you this. We have uh, a pretty large inventory of different horns, and we will be offering them upgraded with VGRs and mod kits as uh, part of the package deal. So they're used horns, they're more affordable. And if you can't get into uh, an X-Series horn that's three to $4,000, then you might be able to get into a good used or nearly new horn for maybe a couple thousand dollars that has some of our improvements on it. All right, I wanna thank you for joining me today and for being patient with me explaining all these big things in a small compact um, period of time. And uh, if you do have questions, put them in the comments below or just give us a call. Our number is 303-657-2747. You can email us at harrelsontrumpets.com or just visit our website, which is whyharrelson.com, whyharrelson.com. All right, I'll catch you next time. If you're driving through Colorado, make sure to stop in and see us.